I followed Gerber's lead. Boom. Boom. We are live. I got to unmute in the Discord. Yep. And I'm alive in Discord. Live and direct. Well, it's the Happy New Year When Soon Show episode, January 3rd, 2023. Will we wait a full year for crypto to go up again? Because 2022 sucked. Maybe. Are we are we all gonna be crypto poor for another year? <laughs> cat cat thinks yes. No, no bull market. Not yet. Which sucks. Because cat isn't getting any younger. I jump into Leo TV chat. Boom, 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 and we're live. I see Wu has just joined us. All my blessings to you, Wu, and here's to a year full, a uh, year full of progress, growth, and future happiness. Love that. Yeah, all of our all of our thoughts and prayers, Wu. She's back, though. Glad to have her back. Plenty of the usual suspects in the audience. Just waiting for all the wins and the soons. Just getting all the announcements. Indeed, yep. Drop it in the announcement so the word is out. And obviously people can watch live on YouTube. and throw your questions in the leo tv chat because i'll be watching that i'm sure there's a thread but usually cal's on that yeah i just posted a thread with all the uh youtube twitter facebook links go out vote me so i'm not crypto poor there you go. Threads. In fact, I only have written a post since Saturday. I started getting a little more uh, consistent again, but holiday weekend, slow things down. So I'll probably have to write a little recap on the fly here. We'll see what my typing skills are. I got a busted finger on my right hand playing ball last night. Oh, and that's never yeah, good. I got a game. I got a game tonight too. I got a league game Ooh. and I'm like, man, this is not going to help me dribbling and shooting. What'd you do? You jam it? Someone hit yeah. the ball? Yeah. Yeah. And like, oh, when like, I used I to play jamming. basketball, that was the worst. Right. And I just, yeah. I mean, I'm, the funny part is this is like the third time I've gotten this finger over like the last two years, but like, I didn't even think it was that bad. Like I was like, all right. And, but yeah. Last night it just fucking swelled up and swelled black up. and blued like crazy, and now I'm like, I gotta. It's like, like the I worst leave. feeling. I I rem yeah. like can I can feel it in my fingers. I remember how that used to feel. It's just so annoying, and I mean, I don't even mind the pain. It's just like now I can't like you can't really bend it to like trying to grip the ball and everything. Like I've played, I'll tape it up and I play with it like that, but I just like. You know, sometimes I might drop a pass or like, you know, whatever. The ball just literally slip out of my hands if I do a quick movement. Yeah. And it's like, I don't need that tonight. Got a big game against our arch rivals. Basically, a bunch, <laughs> of, a bunch of guys I play with at the park. So, you know, there's going to be crap talking. Oh, yeah. That's the best. Uh, it'll be fun. But anyway, we're here to talk about crypto, not basketball. <laughs> One so, basketball uh, NFT. Yes, let's do it. Cat basketball NFTs. Um, since it's been a uh, holiday weekend, there's no questions in the chat from days ago. Sometimes they pile up. Yeah, we can. Uh, I can. I can do a few updates while everyone gets their uh, questions ready. Yeah, it's been, uh, what has it been? It's been like three weeks since we did an AMA, right? Like right before Christmas? Uh, yeah, like yeah, because we didn't do Christmas week. 
Yeah, I mean, it's been crazy. Holiday holiday season is always crazy. People don't work, you know. Um, well, I live in South the Florida. Whole world. People don't work here, period. <laughs> yeah. The whole world kind of goes on pause. Um, Luckily, developers still work. There but, you go. But yeah, but um, outside of that, it's been pretty, uh, pretty calm in the Sooniverse. Um, that's, uh, a couple, we'll go, so that's a couple, great. I just need like a month of updates. Indeed. Well, you shall get them. <laughs> yeah. With the biggest one pie being the uh, UI being in alpha. Beta, right. alpha, beta testing. I don't even know. There's so many Greek words. I can't keep up. <laughs> um, yeah, it's in open alpha or it's in closed alpha right now. Um, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just dropped a, I just dropped a little image in, uh, in the chat. Um, kind of teasing the, uh, the new UI. I've, I've done that a lot lately. Um, there's only a few of us that are really, uh, testing it and, uh, and able to use it. Um, but basically, you know, the, the UI, as you can see, is, is like pretty, pretty ready for, for mainstream. I mean, there's a lot of, when you actually use it, you'll realize that there's a lot of things that aren't there yet. Um, so right now, my camera's not focused. Uh, right now, it's uh, it's in very like early stages, right? Like in terms of in terms of like deep feature integration. So the the core features are what we're focused on right now. So uh, you know, adding things, uh, adding things like image uploading and stuff is still like the, there's like a um, a punch list of things that we need to do. Uh, so. All that stuff is is kind of where we're focused, and then the more like fringe features, like adding a wallet UI, um, and uh, you know, post publisher and stuff like that. We're still we're still working on that stuff, uh, but like the core the core stuff in terms of using threads is is available, and that's what me and the devs are testing. So, you know, I pretty much mostly except for on mobile, I'm pretty much exclusively using the new UI to post all my threads and everything. Uh, and reply to everybody. Um, and you know, one thing that I'm really excited about is the notifications page. Uh, I've shared a lot of screenshots of how it works. I'll share another one. Um, but it basically, it like, I mean, it's, it basically copies Twitter. I mean, we copy Twitter in a lot of ways, but the notifications page really copies Twitter in terms of taking all your replies and all the engagement that, that is, uh, sent your way and kind of putting it in like a singular uh, place. So this new notifications page really changes the way that you can engage on threads. So like if you posted a thread a month ago and someone just randomly finds it on like Google or something and they uh, reply to it, on the current UI, there's almost no way that you're gonna find that um, unless you're using something like a, a third party uh, bot service that tells you when someone replies to one of your comments uh, on Hive. So the new UI puts that all front and center in the notifications page. So anytime someone replies to you or, uh, you know, tags you or anything, it all shows up in the notifications page. Like if, if you post a thread, you know, today and a year from now, someone responds to that thread, you'll see it right in your notifications page, which is exactly how Twitter works. So, um, yeah, the, the, the ability to just like reply to anybody and quickly see who's replying to you, uh, and you can also see who upvotes you and how much the upvote is worth. So it kind of gamifies the experience a little bit because you feel like, you know, you see like, oh, um, you know, uh, at effing guru upvoted you for three cents. And you're like, oh, wow, I just made three cents. You know, it, it gamifies the experience um, of using threads. Uh, and, and I mean, it, it, it's actually really cool. Like if you imagine that we onboard, you know, some normies from Twitter and they start using threads and they start seeing, you know, uh, Cal upvoted you, uh, scared cat guide upvoted you. And you see like voted you four cents, voted you eight cents that starts to like make your Twitter experience on hive a lot more, uh, enjoyable. I think, uh, you'll be, you'll be motivated to say, okay, well, if I post and if I post some threads and I start getting, you know, five, 10 cent upvotes, you know, if I post a thousand threads a day, I'm going to, you know, I can, I could make a living out of this or, you know, I, I can get like a lot more engagement. I can actually earn for my tweets and stuff like that. And that's what, that's what I think we've really been missing. Um, and then, 
you know, just in general, like moving off the notifications page and, and the notifications page is where I spend most of my time on the new UI now. Uh, like I'll post a thread and then, you know, I'll check back later on the notifications page and I've got all sorts of replies and stuff. And it's just, it's, it's really fun to be able to just reply to everybody really quickly. Um, so if you've noticed my amount of the amount of threads that I personally post every day has gone up a lot just because I can easily reply to everybody. Um, outside of that, the, you know, when you land on the homepage, it obviously is identical to Twitter. Um, and in my opinion, that's, you know, that's what Hive has been missing. That's what Leo has been missing in terms of onboarding people is giving people that like zero explanation. Like there should be no landing page, no onboarding page. That's basically how Twitter works. Like there's no landing page for Twitter. You just go to Twitter and you're like, oh, this is Twitter. So we want it to be the same where you come to Leo Finance and you look at it and you're like, oh, this looks like Twitter. It works exactly like Twitter. I can just sign up in 10 seconds and post a tweet, which is called a thread. And I can potentially earn money for it and it gets posted to the blockchain. And that's what we've needed for onboarding. Uh, it's just like, there's, it's very difficult to onboard people and tell them, okay, now go write a 500 word blog post introducing yourself and hopefully you get some upvotes and you'll probably spend 30 minutes to an hour writing it. And you may, you may get discovered, you may not get discovered. Uh, and then all, oh, by the way, there's all this blockchain stuff you got to worry about. So this is like, you look at it, you're like, okay, I can just tweet here, potentially make some money and build an audience. Um, and I can log in in you know ten seconds using my existing Twitter account or something, and uh, and then post something up and and see what happens. And and you can immediately post. I mean, within one minute, if you if you're an existing Twitter user, I would say within one minute you can sign up, sign in, post your first thread, and potentially earn upvotes. And I think that's like the key is like, you know, the, the short attention span is something that we've needed to solve on Hive um to to get mass adoption and i think that i think that the new ui can actually do that um so yeah it's uh that's what i'm really excited about for the new ui is uh just the ability to onboard people so uh eric and i a nomad soul had a conversation um that like at the end of 2022 and we were talking about what our goals were in terms of because he's head of growth so what our goals were in terms of growing Leo Finance in 2023 and, you know, it, the, the core goal, the core, you know, KPI is that we want to go right now, we have about 500 to 600 monthly active users and we want to, we want to 10X that in 2023. And I think with the old UI, that wasn't really possible. You know, we tried all sorts of things to onboard people, but like I said, the, the whole idea of join and yeah, we did make account creation really easy, but the, the whole idea of joining a blockchain and then writing a 500 word post and hoping you get upvoted and then you got to keep writing long form content. Most people are not interested in doing that. Uh, most people are just, they're simply not interested. Uh, there's definitely a big audience out there for long form and I personally love long form, but to expect a new user to come in and care enough to write a, write a long blog post and then wait for people to comment and upvote it is just not, that's not going to work for onboarding. Uh, we tried it, didn't, didn't work. Um, so the key now is it's all about creating Twitter on the blockchain, onboarding people into that and making it super easy to sign in, super easy to sign up, super easy to join and then just create a thread. I mean, like you should be with any user within one minute of joining should be able to post their first thread and start, you know, getting engagement, getting up votes. Um, so I, I think that's that's really the key to onboarding this, you know, the next 5,000 users of Leo Finance. Um, and I think that we can achieve it this year. So I, I actually posted a thread about it, but we set some, we set some targets. Um, so off the top of my head, I think it was Q1, we're aiming to do uh, by the end of Q1. So we basically have a few months now. Um, we're aiming to get from 500 to 1,500 monthly active users. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna triple up, um, or is it a thousand? I might have lied. Let me just find it really quick. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make Eric's goals more aggressive than they already are. Mm. <laughs> All right, Q1 is a thousand. 
So I, I almost gave him a harder job than he already has. Uh, so Q1 is to double our monthly active users from 500 to 1,000. Um, and then, uh, and, and how will we do that? So a couple, a couple of small points that we made was uh, we're going to look to onboard three communities for, so for the community pages feature. Uh, so we're going to get three communities. And one way that we've gotten a lot of interest through that is from the Chain Chatter podcast that we've been doing. Uh, and he's lining up new guests for 2023. So we're basically inviting crypto founders onto the Leo Finance podcast to talk about their project, to just talk about crypto in general and get some exposure. Um, and we've gotten, you know, through that, at least five different of the five of the guests have said that they are willing and able to uh, set up a community page on Leo Finance and start telling their audience to use it. So in Q1, we're going to get three of those communities to actually do it. Um, and you know, that can bring in dozens of users per page or, you know, even hundreds, depending on the size of the community. So at least three communities, that's, that's basically one, one big idea we've got. Uh, and then another idea is just getting more people from hive involved in Leo finance and Leo threads. Cause you know, a lot of people on hive are creating long form. They're, you know, using three speak, they're using splinter lands. They already have an account. So you know, there's a lot of uh, low hanging fruit to get more involvement just from Hive itself. Uh, and, you know, more involvement on threads kind of begets more involvement because if there's engagement, then you're going to get, you know, that, that virtuous cycle. So you need some level of engagement to exist already, which is kind of why we have the whole open alpha thing uh, with, with leofinance.io right now uh, is just to get that early engagement, start filling up threads and stuff like that. Um, and if you look at the number of threads that are posted every single day, it's, it's been growing a lot. Uh, so there's definitely, and, and I use it every day and I'm always looking at new threads. So uh, I've seen a lot of new faces. So a lot of people from Hive are kind of trickling into threads and starting to use it, uh, which is definitely awesome. So Q1, a thousand users, I think a lot of low hanging fruit on Hive, a lot of low hanging fruit on Twitter. Um, obviously Twitter is gonna be like our main focus for most of our advertising. Uh, and then the three communities. So I think between that stuff and then some other stuff that Eric is working on, I think we'll be able to get, um, we'll be able to double our user base. So doubling the user base is a big deal. Obviously it's, you know, and Dolls posted a really interesting analysis of Hive UIs uh, throughout 2022. Turns out that every Hive UI lost users. They lost monthly active users throughout 2022 with the one exception of Leo Finance. So that is very typical for Hive that, um, you know, you lose users as the price goes down because people are less interested in creating content, knowing that the dollar value of what they earn is less. Uh, and we've talked plenty about how that's counterintuitive because when the dollar value is less, you're earning more tokens. So when the next bull market hits, you make more money, but people are pretty short term thinkers. So um, that that has always been a staple on Steam and now Hive that when the price goes down, people leave. Uh, and then they come back when the price goes up. But that all being said, in his post, he showed that Leo Finance was the one UI that did not lose monthly active users throughout 2022. We stayed flat, uh, which is actually pretty pretty awesome in a, in a bear market uh, that we were able to stay flat in terms of users. Um, so now our focus 2023 is to actually grow. So, you know, we, we achieved not falling in users. Now can we actually get more? Uh, that's, that's where everything's at. Um, and I think with threads, that's, I, I honestly, I think threads were a big reason for that. Um, I think there were a lot of different reasons for that, but, um, you know, we have a very strong core community relative to everybody else. Um, but I think threads was a big, a big piece of that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so a thousand Q1, Q2 is to get 1500. So basically the first two quarters, we're just trying to get 500 users per quarter. So 500 users in you know three months, how how doable is that? I think I think it's I think it's pretty achievable uh, with with the new UI. So um, you know and and in Q2 the focus is going to be getting an influencer uh, onboarded into Threads. So we're going to look for just you know even one maybe two maybe three uh, like mid mid sized crypto influencers, and you know it's going to be pretty pretty expensive in terms of you know how we're going to do this. But we've we've talked to a few and gotten some pricing of of what it would take to do this. But um, getting one mid-sized influencer uh, to use Threads, uh, so so you know we're not telling them you can't use Twitter. We're just saying, hey, 
keep using Twitter, but copy and paste all your tweets into threads, every single tweet that you post. Uh, and then also, you know, maybe once a week or once every couple of days, remind your audience that they can engage with you on Twitter on the blockchain. So they can do the same engagement that they're doing with you already on Twitter, but they can do it on, uh, on threads and you, and, and then we'll give them, we haven't really decided the actual, actual number yet, but it might be somewhere between like 250,000 and 500,000 Leo power. So it's going to be pretty significant. Um, we'll delegate that to them, the, the influencer, and then they'll upvote all their audience members who actually engage with them on threads. So the key is, Step one, we're going to start paying this influencer to copy paste their tweets over to threads. And step two, they're going to, you know, every couple of days, they're going to remind their audience that they're on Leo threads. They're going to put a link in their bio, stuff like that. Uh, and, and, you know, tell their audience that there's a Twitter on the blockchain that they're also using in addition to their Twitter account. Um, and if their users, step three, come over to threads and start replying to uh, the influencers threads and engaging with them, the influencer has, you know, 250,000 to 500,000 Leo power, and they're able to upvote each comment that's replying to them for, you know, five cents, 10 cents, whatever. Um, and I think that's going to bring a lot of users. I mean, if you imagine, like a lot of the influencers we're looking at have like 100,000 Twitter followers, right? And, and they have, I mean, the big thing is not just the followers, but the actual engagement that they're getting, you know, they're getting you know, a hundred replies to each tweet that they post, stuff like that. So if we get, you know, 10% of their audience to follow them over to threads uh, and, and then give them that Leo power to upvote them, I think, I think that's going to be, you know, that's going to be one of those massive pieces to onboarding. That's just one influencer. Then you get two, then you get three. Obviously we have to scale it up. It's going to be expensive. Most of these influencers want, you know, a few thousand dollars a month uh, to do this. So it's not going to be cheap, but It'll, I think it'll be really successful in terms of a campaign. Um, so that's kind of so what you're saying is everybody needs to follow the cat's Twitter account. And <laughs> once I get hundred K followers, I can get all the monies, all the money, all the money, thousands to, per month to that might be what I need to, you know, promote threads since I'm, you know, one of those old warhorse uh, long form blog guys, but, uh, I like it. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be like the focus in Q2, right? Is get that one first influencer on kind of play around with that idea, see how it works. And then we'll start onboarding more as we kind of make a plan. And, you know, it's something that we're going to have to learn in real time, right? We're going to have to adapt to, you know, what influencers want and how things like that work. Um, and I think that is what, you know, the influencer thing is what leads us from, you know, we're at 600 now, Q1 will be at 1000, Q2, we're going to push to get to 1500 uh, with the influencer. And I think the influencer will lead us to Q3, Q4, uh, where we get a few more of them. Uh, and that's where we're going to push Q3, we're looking for 3000. So we're gonna have to get 1500 monthly active users from Q2 to Q3. And then uh, Q3 to Q4, we're trying to go from 3000 to 5000. So 2000 more. Um, and then obviously we'll evaluate, set new goals at the end of 2023. Uh, but, uh, you know, Eric's got some some targets here. He's got some incentives for hitting these targets. And, uh, you know, this is the first year for Leo Finance where we have a legitimate head of growth that is working full time and has achievable monthly active user targets, along with having a UI that has a easy onboarding experience. And you look at it and you're like, oh, this is Twitter. So there's no explanation needed. Uh, in terms of explaining how the platform works to a user. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's extremely, I think it's extremely achievable for us. Oh, hundred percent. So um, as far as influencers go, and I'm just like looking at the um, chat. So I want to clarify, because obviously I was multitasking, writing the recap post while listening to all this. And when it comes to the influencers, um, you did mention in terms of, you know, given have them having a chunk of Leo so they can, uh, you know, upvote their, you know, listeners, followers that come over. Um, my first assumption was that's just going to be a straight delegation or is it more so going to be like they're getting those tokens as a compens compensation? Yeah, so they're going to get a delegation, right? But a delegation, right, like cool. let's say their delegation is 250,000 Leo power. They're going to be yeah. earning a shit ton of Leo every day. Um, 
But it just so also then, saves the uh, opportunity of basically someone, you know, just dumping, dumping 200,000 exactly. Leo tokens. All right, cool. Exactly. I figured it was a delegation, but um, there was some question questions about that in the chat. Yeah, so that makes a ton of sense. I figured it was a delegation. I just wanted to verify. Yeah, so that saved us from someone just getting a huge chunk of Leo, you know, unstaking it and uh, selling it. Uh, they obviously, they could sell their earnings every day. And that's... Um, you know, that's totally fine. You know, if they want to sell their earnings, that's a part of the platform, right? Um, yep. But, you know, hopefully what you see is you see a mid-level crypto influencer come in, bring in, you know, with them, say 500 of their uh, Twitter followers, and those 500 people start using threads and the influencers upvoting them, the influencers earning Leo, the influencers hopefully realizing that this is like a great platform. Like if they're using Twitter so actively, they should, you know, probably see the potential of something like like threads, um, and uh, obviously they'll see that steady uh, steady flow of Leo tokens coming in, uh, and then their whole audience will get a flow of Leo tokens, and uh, you know, at least some percentage of that audience is going to realize that that threads has the potential to grow. And I see a, a comment from idiosyncratic one um, that the price of Leo should be in an uptrend, so the new guys will be looking for a token that has thousands of thousands of volume and future promise in terms of value. So yeah, I mean, that's a key piece in, you know, how Hive has survived, you know, five or six years or however long it's been around. Um, I'm, the years are flying by now, I don't remember. Um, so, uh, you know, it's that future promise of value or the future idea that potentially something could be worth more in the future and your earnings are worth more in the future. That's something that has kept Hive and kept Leo alive. Um, and, you know, I, I do think that's an important thing. One thing that, you know, I didn't touch on is the, the ad revenue. And I know a lot of people are waiting for the ad revenue to start back up. And I, I did say that it was going to start back up in January and it is, uh, 2023. So the ad report, the first ad report return will be sometime this month. So, uh, it's very soon. Um, but the ad revenue from going like 500 monthly active users, has given us very solid ad revenue, like thousands of dollars a month, right? Going from 500 to 1,000, obviously the ad revenue should at least double, potentially even more, because it tends to move on an exponential curve. Uh, going from 1,000 to 1,500, 1,500 to 3,000, 3,000 to 5,000, um, I think the ad revenue is just gonna exponentially grow throughout this year. Uh, and the whole idea behind that is that it, it, it buys Leo and removes it from the market, right? So if you've got that kind of built-in mechanism where attention is being uh, profited profited from by the protocol itself, uh, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the driving principle behind like fundamental growth for the Leo token. So that's you know that's obviously always been the focus is building that up and building that up, and uh, you know the new UI takes that to the next level. Obviously through all this onboarding stuff. Uh, something else I haven't touched on is that the new UI. We haven't done the ad. Uh, we haven't added the ad space yet. Um, but I've had someone come in and look at the UI and give us kind of like a little breakdown of how our ads are working and and what we can do better. And basically, they said that our ad placement is is really shitty on the current UI. Uh, we have a lot of wasted ad space and inefficient ad uh, views. And um, I think Mitch, you were saying this on our New Year's Eve special, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. that the the ad space is not like native to the UI. So it kind of like cuts off certain ads and makes it look like tacky and bad. Uh, yeah, and we need ghetto. more. Yeah. And we need to uh, we need to make it less ghetto and make it more um, make more it bougie. more. Yeah. Make it more bougie. <laughs> make it make it inline native ads. Uh, kind of like how Twitter does purdy. it. Purdy, yeah. Purdy ads. <laughs> we want to make it so that you see an ad and you don't even know it's an ad until you've read the ad and you're like, oh, I'm not really interested in this. Or, oh, yeah, I'm interested in this. And then you click it and then we, the protocol makes a lot more money if you click ads and, you know, you're interested in them. So we're going to start working with different ad partners. We're going to start making ads native so that, you know, basically it's going to look like a thread was posted, which is, this is how Twitter works. It's going to look like a thread was posted and the ad content is in that thread, right? So you're like reading through threads and you just read a thread and you're like, oh, this happens to be an ad. And hopefully it's something you're interested in. So this is something that we really need to work on. This is what all Web2 platforms do. They have, um, they have, you know, basically algorithms and protocols in place 
that try to give you ads that you're interested in. And right now, Leo Finance, we just give everyone the same ad. We have them non-native. So they're just kind of like set off on the side or somewhere in the middle and it doesn't look good. Um, so the key is going to, and we don't get a lot of ad clicks, right? We're just, we're basically all on ad views, uh, which is pretty low in terms of, you know, efficiency of revenue. So if we can make ads look native, if we can make ads more interesting to a crypto audience, uh, to all of you guys, then, uh, you know, the ad revenue could, who knows what it could do, right? 10x, 100x, uh, just by getting more clicks. It, it like it makes the the views per ad a lot more valuable for the platform. So uh, ads are going to become a huge focus on the new UI, uh, which obviously will you know that that's how the whole Leo DAO is set up, which which is you know earning that ad revenue and and it gets paid it paid to the DAO as Bitcoin, then converting the Bitcoin to Leo, right? So I think that's going to have a lot of potential. So that's my my long answer to uh, his question about. Uh, putting Leo in an uptrend. You know, you can't guarantee an uptrend, but if we can focus on growing our users and make ads very efficient, make ads, you know, interesting, um, then, you know, the Leo token can get a lot of native uh, native buying from the DAO itself. I mean, technically I can guarantee an uptrend. It's just a matter of how much money that would take. How many hundreds of thousands of dollars would need to get plowed into Leo over the course of a month or two to force an uptrend? Not much. I mean, the market cap is 500K, right? So exactly. Yeah. You know, you all, all things being equal, throw 100K at it and the price goes up 20%. Boom. All I got to do is win a big poker tournament and I'm in. <laughs> I can create an uptrend. I shall has all the Leo. What is that? BNB minor ads incoming? Mm, not sure what it means. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Looks like we're getting more detail. Um, so <clears throat> it's funny, Idiosyncratic uh, mentioned uh, how about a Pelio uh, exchange listing at the same time. I probably would prefer a Belio listing. Um, yeah. Because that would probably that would probably mean Binance. Um, but uh, I don't know if that's something that's ever really been in the cards. I guess that's more possible though, or no? Like, are these Hive Engine tokens really something? Well, that's actually not a Hive Engine token, sorry. Leo is. Um, B Leo's a rat. Yeah, so B Leo technically could get on Binance. Yeah, yeah, they could. I mean, you Crazy. just pay enough, pay enough money and you can get listed on anything. Um, yeah, I still Binance am a big believer in DEXs. Obviously, I want to put uh, Leo <clears throat> on ThorChain. Um, nice. But yeah, I mean the the sex listings have a have a place too. Um, but what we really need to focus on is the monthly active users, in my opinion. That's kind of yep. the uh, that's kind of the key, the the core KPI. Indeed, I mean a centralized exchange is great, obviously for exposure and liquidity, but there's definitely a hefty cost to get on there. Right. But um, and know, there's no point that. in. You know, there's plenty of shit tokens that are listed on centralized exchanges and they pump and dump oh, yeah. and get some quick volume, make some quick money and run away. Um, but that's obviously I mean, not what we're looking for. We're looking for that slow and steady grind up in terms of users and actual utility, right? Yeah. I mean, wasn't there a token with the ticker Leo that was on centralized exchanges that essentially yeah. is a shit coin? Yep. So, I have no idea what it's used for. Neither do I. I glanced at it like once or twice. Um, cool. So, um, Leo finance is chugging along. UI is being actively tested. Is there anything new in the world of, um, Polycub or cub finance? Yeah. So DeFi on the DeFi side. Um, that's the word I was forgetting. DeFi, <laughs> DeFi the spacing. Yeah. So the, the multi-token bridge liquidity keeps growing. So we're seeing a lot more, uh, you know, BHVD beehive get pooled, uh, which is awesome. The BHVD USD pools at 280,000. Um, and you know, the other pools are growing as well. Um, so we've just been kind of, again, going back to that slow and steady grind, like slow and steady grinding more liquidity into the multi-token bridge. 
Uh, that's huge. Um, I taught, I teased a little bit about our bot 2.0, uh, in the last monthly, uh, cub report, the next monthly cub report will be going out this week as well. Um, so the, you know, the, the, our bot 2.0 code is really focused on expanding what the, our bot does right now. So, um, let me pull this up. Just so I have it all in front of me. Um, the, in the month of November, the, our bot this is our bot 1.0, right? The, the original code we built uh, generated $4,960. So, and the total revenue in November was $9,125. So the our bot as it stands makes over half of all the revenue for cub. Uh, and, and that whole $9,000 was, you know, it, it gets put into the cub DAO, the cub DAO buys cub off the market and then it burns it. So the total amount of cub burned is actually about to hit 2 million. It's 1.95 million. Um, so, uh, you know, being that the R bot is such a big percentage, we, we looked at how we can increase revenue because, uh, you know, the Dow paid out in November, $17,125 in, uh, in LP incentives. So, you know, the, the protocol earned 9,000, it paid out 17,000, right? So we need to make up that deficit and, and we've slowly been getting there. I mean, like prior to the multi-token bridge, which launched, August, 2022, um, the protocol was making, I don't know, like a hundred bucks a month from kingdoms. I mean, it was very minuscule because it was all just kingdoms management fees. Um, so now that the protocol has this multi-token bridge, it's generating a ton of revenue. I mean, to go from a hundred dollars a month or whatever it was to $9,000 a month in a matter of like four months, uh, is pretty huge. Um, so the focus is just on growing that revenue and, and the revenue grew from November to December. Obviously that report will be out soon um, to talk about the month of December. Uh, but every single month, we're just seeing that revenue grow, you know, 20% here, 30% here, it just keeps growing. But a big piece of that being the arbitrage bot code, we, we reviewed it and we realized there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of potential that we're leaving on the table in terms of arbitraging actually like native hive and native HBD. Um, so, you know, the new ARB code will, will arbitrage the internal market in addition to BHBD Beehive. It'll also arbitrage Binance's markets and potentially Bittrex is another one we're looking at. Uh, and then any other exchanges we can find where Hive is listed, obviously, uh, swap.hive is going to be on that short list as well for Hive Engine. So really what we're doing is we're expanding the ARB bot code to be one more efficient and to access a greater number of markets. And really in the long run, our goal is to access all hive markets. And I was telling you this in the pre-show, but really the goal behind this is one, we wanna generate you know, profit for the DAO. So last or in November generating you know, $4,900 for the DAO, uh, it bought back and burned cub, which is awesome. Um, but you know, it, growing that figure is really important for Cub's token price and for liquidity providers. And, you know, if the Cub, if Cub number go up, then more liquidity will come in for BHBD Beehive because the, obviously the APY goes up. Um, so that's kind of, you know, flipping Cub deflationary is a big goal. So number one, generate profit. Number two, our, our goal is to actually just vortex a lot of the trading volume that's happening on, you know, Binance, on the internal market, on Hive, on Hive Engine. Our goal is to kind of like suck away some of that volume and bring it over to Beehive BHBD as the derivatives. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of volume that happens for Hive on these other exchanges. And what we're just trying to do is get a lot of that volume and push it through arbitrage into BHBD Beehive. Uh, and obviously, as that volume increases, the wrapping fees increase. Uh, Oracle staking increases because there's more liquidity um, and the arbitrage revenue from all of that arbitrage is is enormous. So our goal right now, you know, we're kind of getting to the we're kind of getting to like that that light at the end of the tunnel where, you know, when the bridge first launched, I think it generated like three thirty five hundred, maybe four thousand dollars the first month um, to now it's generating nine thousand dollars a month. Uh, and it's paying out 17,000 in terms of LP incentives. We're, we're, we've got the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of flipping deflationary. Um, and the, the low cub price is actually really helping us achieve that because that $17,000 actually comes down as the price comes down. So 
you know, the light is at the end of the tunnel in terms of flipping deflationary. And our goal is, can we, can we flip deflationary and simultaneously generate a lot of Hive and HBD and push it into the oracles uh, to actually just deepen the liquidity? And as the liquidity deepens, the arbitrage increases. It, it creates like this pinwheel effect. Um, so we are still in the early stages of that pinwheel. It's only month, I think it's month four or month five of uh, Beehive and BHBD being live. Um, so, you know, we're in the early stages of that pinwheel, but we're more than half of the way there, right? So it's it's pretty exciting to see how the liquidity has grown and how the revenue grows too. Um, and I just, I think we can do a lot better in terms of revenue um, with the new ARB bot code. So that's what I'm very, very excited for with the DeFi stuff. It's just getting like, I wake up every morning and my number one focus is like, can we flip cub deflationary? And uh, that's, you know, in terms of the financial part of all of this stuff that we're doing, that's what, you know, that's what I'm focused on. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then in terms of polycub, uh, we tried to push out a proposal to make polycub a little bit more like cub because the, the model on cub is working very well. Um, so I think we can push a very similar model out on polycub. That proposal didn't go through. Um, mainly because, you know, one large stakeholder didn't, didn't want to vote it through. And they said they wanted more information about it before they voted it. So we're going to put out, and this is the beauty and the downfall of having a DAO is where you actually have stake, you know, yeah, you actually have people that can vote their opinion. And if their opinion doesn't align with what the developers want to do, then you got to keep going back to the drawing board until everyone agrees. Um, so uh, a new proposal is about to go live on Polycub, and then hopefully everyone will vote it. And uh, I think it'll make Polycub a lot more like Cub, which I think will increase the multi-token bridge revenue for PHive, PHBD, uh, and actually start to bring more liquidity back there because the liquidity has basically just been steadily dropping um, on Polycub. So, but you know, th this is the difference, right? The liquidity on Cub has been steadily increasing. The liquidity on Polycub has been steadily decreasing. And the difference is Polycub's incentives keep dropping and Cub's incentives stay the same. So we uh, we need to uh, we need to work on this. And uh, I, I think I think with Cub, what we've been doing, and this is part of the reason why I've let so many months go by, is that the multi-token bridge is really working well on Cub. And we're just saying, you know, look at it working well here. We're just trying to take the same thing and push it out on Polycub. Um, so that's where all like the DeFi it. stuff is. Cool. All the updates. Um, wow, it's already five after two. I'm going here for a hot minute. Oh yeah, flying. Well, uh, will P could be inflationary too. Uh, I mean, ideally one day. Can I guess essentially with those potential changes in Polycub, can um, we get to the point where there's a flippening with P Cub as well? Uh, say that again. I'm just looking at your uh, syncratics question in terms of P cub. So really just made me think about, you know, if, you know, some of these changes do get approved and voted to move forward on if, uh, you know, that puts polycub on a path to, you know, have that same potential flipping. Yeah. Deflationary. Yeah. You know, there's two different ways that polycub can go. Um, one way is, um one way is that it goes deflationary the other way is that the the whole vex system um the vex polycub system is able to build itself right so it's it's really just about growing liquidity we need to get back polycub had i mean at one point the phpd usdc pool had over four hundred thousand dollars in liquidity right now it's got twenty five thousand dollars so uh, the, the, the reward system that is set up on Polycub was thought to be a great system at the beginning. Clearly it has in, in reality, it hasn't worked out as the theory was, uh, and really what it's been doing is just sucking down liquidity. Um, so yeah, that's, in my opinion, we need to fix that ASAP. Um, and that's what the proposal that I, we pushed that proposal out, I think three months ago. And it didn't get voted through. And in my opinion, and, and at the time, I think when we pushed out the proposal, PHBD still had about $90,000 in liquidity. So as you can see, I mean, the, the fact that the proposal didn't get pushed through, I think is one of the big reasons that Polycub has not been working very well. 
um, cause it's still on that model that I think we thought would work well in the beginning, but it's not working well in, in practice. So, um, the, the next step for Polycub is really to get a proposal pushed out to fix the things that are broken. Um, so hopefully the, uh, X and VEX Polycub stakeholders wake up to that reality and and uh, accept some sort of proposal to change things. I'll certainly be keeping my eye out for the governance vote, which I'm sure will at a minimum hit the announcements in Discord, and I'm sure be up on the main page on Leo Finance. Yep. For us people that aren't living on threads yet, hashtag this guy. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Well, do we want to wrap up with any uh, general crypto chatter now that we're in the new year? Yeah. Yeah. New year, same Bitcoin. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> what do you think is going on with uh, with Bitcoin? What's your uh, what's the cat analysis? We're at 16,600 as of today, where we've I mean, literally wow. been trading flat since November. I mean, like price. Early November, you had the whole, you know, FTX thing. We dropped from 21,000 to 15,000. And since then, we've literally been in that 15 to 17,000 channel. Haven't moved. Yeah. I mean, price and price and volatility literally have been playing a like cat and mouse game. Um, extreme pun intended. The, um, what you call it? The, uh, Flatlining, so to speak, like you said, has uh, led to a whole not. Hold on. I just realized that I haven't had this up there the whole time. A whole lot of nothing. People got to know who I am. I'm the scaredy cat guy. Find me on real <laughs> finance. This, Find enough of them. This real name stuff is stupid. I don't even know why that's up there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Pretty much, you know, that 16, that mid 16 area was a potential support level that I was looking at back when we were still above 20. And, um, you know, I had an order there, a small order that got filled. And I've since, you know, bought a little more Bitcoin in this area since then. Um, in fact, I actually bought a little at, uh, I think it was like 16.7 or whatever it was the day of Christmas. Cause I give my mom a little bit of Bitcoin every Christmas because oh, I know nice. A, she'll never buy it herself. B, she thinks she doesn't want it, but, you know, We'll realize that Bitcoin is awesome one day. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's been interesting because I know you DCA and um, I'm trying to do a little more because really I was more so just holding a big chunk of fresh powder to buy, you know, on the next leg down that I thought we were going to get and we keep not getting it. Um, I don't know, you know, just because we flatlined for a while and we're building this base doesn't mean we're not going to go lower, but... The flip side is, it at least is, you know, providing price action that gives you the possibility of a bottom. But who knows? You know, the stock market's still getting wrecked. It's down today. You know, it's probably going to go lower. Um, Tesla's getting its ass kicked. Yeah, I bought a bunch. I bought I bought a bunch at a buck thirty. All all happy. Uh, I mean, it's in my it's in my IRA, so I'm holding it for 15 years anyway. But I I bought a bunch of buck thirty, like when I finally had money free up from that real estate sale, and I'm already down like 20 something percent. I'm like, I got wrecked in a week. I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, clearly there's still weakness in markets on uh, in general, so that doesn't bode well for Bitcoin. Um, but. Uh, We'll see. Maybe it can uh, have relative strength and outperform because, I mean, if it's going sideways and equity markets are going down, then technically it's outperforming. Yeah. But uh, yeah, overall, I don't, I'm not bullish on 2023. I look at 23, really? 23 is a um, opportunity to continue to build your stake, you know, to uh, acquire coin for the bull run. Um, but Maybe things change in the summer, but I just don't see this first six months of the year being positive. I mean, that doesn't mean we can't get a little like, you know, bullish bounce or something, but I just don't see how there's going to be like any real sustained bullish activity in the first six months of this year, especially yeah. with, you know, the Fed probably raising rates one or two more times. Yeah, I, uh, you know, like you said, I, I dollar cost average. Um, I do have, you know, ladder orders that they are set for various prices. So like I got some filled at like just above 15 K. Um, 
So, you know, those, those bigger chunks, but every single day, you know, I'm buying some Bitcoin, no matter how small of the, you know, the amount is, you know, a few hundred dollars there, a few hundred dollars here. It's like just getting a little bit of Bitcoin every single day. Um, and uh, like you said, stacking and staking. And, uh, you know, I, I actually wrote this morning, I wrote an article, uh, shameless self-promotion in the Discord. Um, oh, that's right. I did post the <laughs> recap. I, uh, I wrote an article about uh, Bitcoin collateralized lending. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, a, I know a few people that, that do the same thing that I do, which is um, basically we're, we're constantly stacking Bitcoin through dollar cost averaging, right? So every day, just a little bit more Bitcoin, a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, and then, you know, every month, you know, I'm, I'm a human being. I have uh, expenses. I have life expenses. Uh, I also do have business expenses that I do this with. Um, so I push that Bitcoin into a vault, uh, which is obviously used as collateral. And then I take a loan out, a stable coin loan against that Bitcoin. And then I use that loan to pay, you know, bills. So like, let's say, I, you know, I got to pay my rent. Uh, I got to pay my car payment, stuff like that. I'll push the Bitcoin into that vault, take a, you know, in this case, I, I mostly use MakerDAO. I'll take a DAI a uh, stable coin loan against it, convert the die into, you know, dollars, pay my bills uh, with those dollars. And, uh, you know, to someone who, who might not be familiar with it, it might sound like, you know, bad, like you're taking on a bunch of debt. Uh, but in, in the article I wrote, I talked about the last bear cycle because I've been doing this for years. Um, so I was doing this, you know, way back in, what was it like 2018, 2019 is I think around the time I, I kind of started getting heavy into it. Um, so, I mean, I was buying Bitcoin at, you know, 5,000, 7,000, you know, I think even some at like 4,000 when, you know, we had the 2020 crash, um, taking all that Bitcoin and pushing it into a vault and then taking a loan to pay my bills. So what I was doing is in, I, I could take, you know, all my, you know, you know, all my income and stuff and I could just pay my bills directly. Right. Or I could take all my income, I could buy Bitcoin, I could put the Bitcoin in a vault and I could take a loan against that Bitcoin and then pay all my bills. And what I'm doing is I'm still paying the bills the same way I would have if I just took my income straight up and paid it. Um, but instead of just doing that, I'm actually stacking a bunch of Bitcoin so that when the next bull cycle does come, you know, Bitcoin goes up a lot in price and then I can pay the loan off uh, after, right? So this is kind of like a, a Michael Saylor has basically done this in like the most extreme way. Um, but, and I think he's even, yeah, he's made uh, like, he's been on interviews and stuff where he's talked about it, where he talks about how, you know, rich people, what they do is they buy a big house, they have that house, they take a loan against it, they pay their shit and, you know, their house is appreciating in value a few percent a year. And, you know, 20 years later, when they go to sell their house, you know, they make more money than the loan plus, you know, everything else, and then they pay everything down, right? Um, Morton Matt is saying you have to have an appetite for risk. That's not necessarily true. Uh, you can set up one of these these vaults with very low uh, liquidity uh, liquidation uh, settings, right? So like the vault that I shared there is like the most extreme version of like a risk on vault where, you know, liquidation price is 12,500. So, you know, if Bitcoin drops 12,500, you're screwed uh, unless you have more collateral to add, which I obviously do. Um, so if you keep your liquidation price low, there's, you know, very little risk that uh, I talked about a little bit, but the risk in this type of vault is more so with wrapped Bitcoin. So you're, you obviously have a little bit of counterparty risk. Um, so if you're aware of that and you're comfortable with it, which I am, cause I've been using it for years, um, that, you know, the risk is, is the risk is what you make it right. Um, but you know, say that like Bitcoin 17 K right now. If you're just accumulating Bitcoin at 17K, accumulating, accumulating, let's say your bills are $1,000 a month, right? If you're accumulating $2,000 a month worth of Bitcoin, so your income is 2,000, your bills are 1,000, you take all $2,000, put it in a Bitcoin vault, take out a $1,000 loan against the Bitcoin, which is, this is all feasible. This is like pretty much exactly what I do. You take out a $1,000 loan against the $2,000 worth of Bitcoin you just bought, pay all your bills. So now you're just, you're like surviving, right? You're, you're surviving, but you're also putting Bitcoin in this vault. And now let's say that Bitcoin in the bull market, let's say it takes two years. So it's not until 2025 that Bitcoin goes up, but you've been doing this from 2023 to 2025. 
every month you're just putting away this Bitcoin and you're still paying all your bills uh, with the loans, you've probably accumulated what twenty four thousand dollars worth of loans, right? Two two years worth of loans. So twenty four thousand dollars worth of loans, and you've accumulated fifty uh, fifty two thousand dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin, right? Uh, or forty eight thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. So if you you've accumulated forty eight thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. You've accumulated twenty four thousand dollars worth of debt. Now let's say that the the bull cycle hits and Bitcoin doubles. Let's just say it doubles in price. So your forty eight thousand is now ninety what six thousand uh, ninety six thousand um, dollars, and your loan amount is still twenty four thousand. So now your Bitcoin has gone up more than the debt you've taken. So your profit is more than the debt. And you just pay the debt off, and now you're still left with a big bag of Bitcoin. Um, yeah, and then he said you can't tax loans. That's another thing. If you're smart, and you know, I have an accountant for all this stuff, but um, if you're smart, you can take all the loan payments you make, and you can actually write it off against your taxes. So you know, let, like on MakerDAO, I think the most of the vaults are around like an average of say three percent a year is what the interest rate is. So I can write off that three percent a year uh, against my uh, my you know business profits. Heck yeah! And then on top of that, all the expenses that you've paid with the loans <laughs> is not actually oh you're not God. selling any Bitcoin, so you're not getting taxed. Like if you take a thousand dollars out every month from a loan, you that's not capital gains. You don't get taxed on it. Uh, sorry, uh, more than had me laughing. Easy on paper, hard to explain to the wife. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. You know, what you got to do is just don't tell the wife. <laughs> oh, my God. Or or I guess, you know, I got lucky and uh, my girlfriend kind of actually understands it because she's savvy financially to an extent. So and it's all about this type of shit. In fact, she's probably more risky than I am. I need to not tell her that's the stuff. <laughs> you know, I got an easy I got an easy fix for that. Buy the two thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin every month, put it into the vault, take a twelve hundred dollar loan. Use a thousand to pay your bills, take 200 and buy or something every month. Just say, look, it's working. Go. There you go. Boom. Morton, all your problems are solved. You have been answered. <laughs> You've been calified. Um, calified. Yeah, we've like talked that. about this before, and I got to like literally make a to do list. Um, so I actually get to this because it's something I should leverage, um, even if it's in a very conservative approach, um, because, you know, even if, I'm borrowing 25%, so I can have a, li a liquidation price that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I'm not worried about anything unless Bitcoin goes to like 5K or something or like, you know, lower. Uh, I'd have to decide whatever my black swan price is, that's, I want to be just below that. So I got to decide what my black swan price is first, which honestly, I think might just be below 10K because that's when the whole world will go crazy, which if we ever saw that, I'm going to have so many orders sitting at like, 7500 for hopefully that flash crash through 10. Yeah. Um I'll be going I'll, I won't even just grab money from wherever I can. I don't even care <laughs> whatever debt is needed. Um But yeah, what's um I forgot I'd asked you before. What's the like interest rate generally on these Yeah. Uh, it depends. Um you can choose uh, you can choose different uh, interest rates based on how low, how much of a collateralization ratio you have. Gotcha. Um, so let me just pull it up. Um, so like, let's say you so want to borrow. Like higher interest with higher uh, leverage? Um, exactly. Gotcha. Um, All right. So that even works out for me. because I'll be Yeah, here I'm getting you a screenshot. What is so, uh, is MakerDAO? Is that like uh, a ETH based? Uh, I've actually legit never. It's on that, Ethereum. It's amazing. All right, cool. Yeah, and the ETH. So amazing. I I talked about it in my article. If you wanna <laughs> wanna check yeah, it out. Cool. Um, but I, um, oh, yeah. you know, I've been using it for years. And Ethereum gas used to be so expensive. Like whenever I wanted to do anything in one of my vaults, it was like three hundred dollars to do anything. So I would only I move big chunks. Yeah, right. that's why I used to never do it. Right. And now I I do I do the same thing I used to do where I still am moving pretty big chunks, but the fees are anywhere from like 20 to 40 dollars. Like the fees are are relatively low. Uh, you know, it used to be hundreds, now it's just 
you know, 10, 15, Yeah, now 20. it's worth it because if you, I mean, you know, because think about it, you know, if someone's just trying to like, whatever it is, even if they're just throwing like a few thousand on there. Right. Like you said, you know, you do that 2000 a month, like, and back in the day, it wasn't even worth it with the fees. You're, yep. you know, you're literally getting whacked between going in and going out. You're getting whacked, you know, 30% essentially on fees. Right. So. Yeah. So in the screenshot I showed, you can see all the different uh, wrapped Bitcoin options. Um, so if you do like the, the highest, um, the highest borrowing multiple, your interest rate is three and a half percent. If you do the medium one, it's 2%. I typically do the medium one because um, I feel like you get the most bang for your buck. Um, but yeah, it's uh, 2% for the medium one. And then if you do the low one, so if you, like, and and with the uh, liquidation price that you were talking about with 8,000, you'd probably do the low one uh, just because, you know, that obviously has a factor on it. Um, so you would be paying 0.75%. Uh, so not even 1% a year. So that's crazy. I don't even know. Very attractive. That. Yeah. I don't even know how the hell they pull that off. They that's do it. Epic. Yeah. Well, and Dai works really well. Like, I mean, I'm super bullish on MakerDAO and Dai. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are a little bit scared of these protocols now with all the recent blow ups in the past year. But, um, you know, I wouldn't put all my money into this, but I do feel very confident in the system that is built there. They're also like the pretty much the longest standing DeFi protocol out there, you know, top three, at least in, in terms of age, uh, they're like up there with curve. So it's, uh, you know, they've, they've weathered multiple. Now they've weathered at least two bear cycles, maybe three. I don't remember if they were around that long, but, um, they've at least weathered the 2018, uh, bear and now the 2022 bear. So nice yeah. DeFi for the win yeah DeFi is i love off those central love exchanges. all this DeFi stuff that happened yeah. i was at uh what was it sunday uh my old trading buddy slash mentor had like a, a brunch at his house um and you know there's no crypto people there at all it's like stock yeah. trading people and regular folk and you know some of them had crypto or whatever so you know the conversation obviously was, you know, whatever this, that, the other thing, obviously FTX came up and I'm just like, yeah, this is why decentralized is the way to go. Like the whole point of crypto, like anytime you want a centralized exchange with crypto, you're missing the point and it's defeating the whole purpose. So cool. Alrighty. Yeah. Well, the recap post is up for anyone that can't remember all the gibberish that was spoken over the last hour mm -hmm. and a half. And, well, both uh, the cat. Yes, go vote the cat. And, I'm voting uh, them right now, 100%. Learn how to do loans. Go uh, pay your bills like Cal does with his post on the Bitcoin yep. collateralization, which I'm actually opening this post right now. I probably voted on it and didn't even like look at it. Smart. That's how you use I the mean, platform. <laughs> yeah. I have a few people on auto vote. Cool. All right. Well, that's Wait. a wrap for uh, the first week of january 2023 so uh big things in store and yeah. you know as a user base let's do our best to spread the word and get leo finance uh active users up every month because yep. uh more users means more eyeballs means more ad revenue at a minimum and yep. that alone is a positive yep one week down 51 to go for the ama and uh yeah like mitch said let's uh we all got to work together to get these mau targets i'm sure a nomad soul is going to start reaching out to a bunch of people about his ideas. That's, you know, what he tends to do, which is awesome, which is get the community involved in his ideas for growth. So once the new UI goes live, it's going to be big, uh, big time push to get us from 500 to a thousand monthly active users by the end of Q1. So, um, that's going to be the KPI to watch out for. And, uh, you yeah. know, so oh. thanks. Thanks for Mitch. Thanks Mitch for jumping on. Thanks everybody for joining first of 2023 many more to go indeed all right everyone have a good one and we'll yep. see you on the next one see ya later <laughs>